What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, we're gonna be doing part two of answering your questions on Cubase. I have a handful of questions to go ahead and answer for you and also showing you in real time using my laptop. If you didn't see part one and you wanna check out part one to see what questions I answered for that episode, I'm gonna go ahead and link that on the top right right now and also in the description below. With that being said, let's get right to it. Before we begin, in my community tab, I constantly post to see what you guys are struggling with and also polls to see what kinds of videos you guys want to see next. If you wanna post your concerns on the comment section in the community tab, and that way maybe some of your questions can be highlighted in this series so that I can go ahead and answer that in real time using Cubase. Let's jump into the first question. So the first question is by B. Hespi, and he's asking, it would be interesting to know how to set up the mixer routing. So for example, synth track into synth group into synth master bus, and then also like a drum group, drum master into a master output, effects, effects bus. He says, I have no idea if this is correct or if there's a better way to route tracks or buses. On the internet, there's hardly to no content about this subject matter. And by the way, glad you're back. So thank you, B. Hespi, for the question, and I'm glad I'm back too, I appreciate it. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into Cubase right now. We're gonna check out how to group your tracks and bust them. There really isn't a right or wrong way to do it. It's more like a workflow thing, but I'm gonna show you how I would probably set up my buses so that I have my groups and then I have my master tracks and then I have it all going to, let's say like a sub mix or something like that. So let's go ahead and check out the example on Cubase. So here I have my Cubase screen and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate a few tracks here. I really should just create a hotkey. I have a hotkey on my main computer, but on my laptop I don't have a duplicate hotkey. So let's just say I have these tracks here and I'm going to create, move this to a folder and let's say this is my, let's put guitar. And then this is going to be uh, guitar main. We're gonna put guitar rhythm left and then guitar rhythm right. And then down below here, we're gonna say this is our keyboard stem. Let's put keyboard and then we're gonna put key main, keys uh, left and then this is going to be keys right. And let's delete this last track. So let's just use two instruments so this explanation is not too long. So here I've just organized them on my screen for Cubase. But if we look at the mixer, we can see that I don't really group anything into anything because if I open routing, they're all still going to a stereo out bus. So what I would do in this particular case is I would highlight the three guitar parts. I'm gonna right click or double click with two fingers if you're using a laptop. You're gonna hit add track and then you're gonna go to group channel to selected channels. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna call this guitar mix. And then I'm gonna make it a stereo track because again, if I'm panning left and right for these two guitars, if we put it in mono, then the panning is gonna go away. So I want it to be a stereo track and I'm gonna hit add. Now I've created a group, an actual routed group. So if I go to my console window here, you're gonna see that the guitar mix is here, but if I look at my guitars, which is these three, it says guitar mix on all three of them. So now that one's being grouped into my guitar mix. Now what I would do is the same thing for the keyboard. I grab all three and I put add track, group selected, stereo, we're gonna call this keyboard mix. Oops, let's fix that so it looks nice. Now when we open up the console window, if I go to mix console, you're gonna see that now these three are under keyboard mix. 
Now from here, what I can do is I can, let's say, create what we call like a mix bus. So I already have a separate channel for my guitars. I have a separate channel for my keyboards. So now I'm going to grab the grouped mix tracks and I'm going to again create a track but this time I'm gonna group them here and now I'm gonna call this a mix bus right now I have a channel that's gonna have all of my guitars and all of my keyboards in it if I go to the console window now you're gonna see that it says guitar and keyboard mix is going to the mix bus so this mix bus is my master track I never do mastering on the actual stereo out track I actually bus all of my instruments into a mix bus, do my processing there, and the only thing I'll probably slap on the stereo out is a limiter if I have to, but I usually do all of my mastering inside of the mix bus. Why? Because I generally don't like touching the stereo out. So for example, a good use case that I just thought of right now is, let's say you're working in a film score and you have the movie and the audio file and then you have all of the music files. I don't want to run all of my tracks to the stereo out and master everything in the stereo out. Why? Because you're going to affect the audio track as well. And we don't want that. We want to just affect the music. So what do I do? I package all of the music stems into a mix bus and the audio track is separate from that. So when I'm balancing the two, I'm not gonna be using all of my processing. So for example, I might EQ a certain way or take off or carve off the low end and now the, the voice track, the dialogue is gonna sound weird. So we don't want that. That's why I use a mix bus and I've just kind of grown to always put my music material inside of the mix bus. Again, we don't want to overcomplicate this. We don't want to have so many folders and files and groups and all that. If you have a large session, then it can get pretty complex and these folder structures are very important. But for the most part, if you're just independently producing, something like this or a structure like this should be fine. So I hope that was a pretty good explanation on how I use the groups and like submixes. So question number two is by Kuthka and he is asking, is there any way to have more than eight visibility settings with a shortcut? So the answer to that question is no, I don't think you can. So let's go ahead and take a look at Cubase and see what we have in our shortcut menu. So if we go into edit and go down to key commands, you're gonna see that we have, if I type in here visibility, you're gonna see that we have only eight visibility configurations that we can actually attach a shortcut to. So I don't think we can add more. There really is no way to like add another configuration, but for those who are curious on how you can do this, let me just go ahead and show an example on how you set up the shortcut, because it might help some people watching this. So let's just use this example. I'm gonna have the guitars and the keyboard and I wanna set up a visibility filter so that anytime I hit a specific key command or hotkey or shortcut, it's gonna only show the guitars. So I'm gonna go up to configurations here and if you don't see this here, we're gonna to go to the right side where this gearbox is, the top one, not the bottom one, and we're gonna hit where it says track visibility configurations. Check that and then you're gonna get this little box right here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the down arrow add configuration and we're going to call this guitar and just hit OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck the mix bus on the left side and if you don't see this left side here we're going to open it by hitting the panel there. Hit visibility and we're going to turn off keyboard and we're going to turn off group tracks. Notice how now when I look at the guitar track here there's a little asterisk. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit that, go to update configuration and now the guitar visibility filter has been set. If I go and I create, let's say another one and call it keyboard, hit okay, now we have two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the visibility section, take off guitar, put keyboard. And now again, look at the asterisk, we're gonna hit update configuration. And for kicks and giggles, let's just make a third one and say we're gonna call this submixes. And now we have the keyboards off and turn off just the submixes. And again, update configuration. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our shortcuts and we're going to assign each one of these visibility filters to a specific shortcut. 
So I've already done a few as I was testing it out just to make sure that it works. So we have configuration one on command option one, configuration two on command option two, and then now for configuration three, we're gonna click it, go to type in key, option command three, and then nothing is assigned to it, so we're gonna hit assign and then okay. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna go option command one. I see only the guitar, and if you look at the top here, it says guitar visibility filter. If I hit option command two, now I only see the keyboard, and you can see I'm switching on the left here. And then if I hit command option three, you're gonna see I only have my sub mixes. So this is how you create visibility shortcuts. You just have to take the time to set that up before. So we're gonna move on to the next question. This next question is by Hoa Pierre, and he is saying, but it reverses every audio file. So this specific question is talking about when you use an audio file that you record it on Cubase, and then you duplicate that audio file, put it on a separate track, and you reverse one of them. He's saying that it reverses every single one of those. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on with that. So we are back in Cubase. I'm gonna grab all of my tracks and I'm just going to toss them. And we are gonna create, uh, contain, yes. We're gonna create an audio track. That's fine, let's call it Vox. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record my voice a little bit. So here I have an audio track that's supposed to be in mono, but I left it in stereo for some reason. And let's go ahead and stop it here. So it doesn't matter if it's in stereo, but of course you wanna always record your vocals in mono. So here we have our stereo file. And we want to, so we can do it two ways. We can either hold option and double click or two finger click on Mac or you can go to audio processes and then reverse. I'm gonna hold option, right click, process, and then reverse. And now my sample has been reversed. You saw it flip over. Now what happens if I duplicate this track and here I have another copy of this and I go to this one and I try to reverse it back to where it was. So I'm gonna go to process and reverse. Watch what happens. See how it says this project contains an audio event that has the same material. Do you wanna create a new version? If you don't see this dialogue, it means that something is off on your preferences and maybe that could be causing the glitch of keeping all your audio files the same or kind of reversing all of them because if you just reverse the same audio file, then of course all of them are gonna reverse. In this case, if I hit new version, this one creates a new audio in the audio pool, a new audio file, and it names it something different and reverses the clip. So let's check out the preference settings so we can see where that option is. So if we go to Cubase and then settings, we open up preference settings. So if we go to audio under editing and we go to where it says on processing shared clips, we're going to leave the open options dialog. Why? So if we just hit create new version, it's not going to ask us, hey, there's another audio file here, do you wanna make a new version? Check this out. If I duplicate this again, I have the same audio track, and now I'm going to option, right click, reverse. It didn't tell me or nothing popped up saying, hey, we reversed it, but we made a new version. It just kinda did it on its own. But I don't like that because what if I'm working quick or I have a lot of tracks and I accidentally hit something and it moves or changes or reverses and now I don't know what happened or what I did. I want that dialog box to come out. Why? Because it just assures me and just lets me know, hey, you're trying to do something. Do you wanna actually do it? So I would go back into Cubase and I would put open options dialog. So it lets me know, it says, hey, you're about to do something crazy. Do you wanna do it? And then I have the option or the liberty to say, create the new version, I did do it, or oops, that was a mistake, I did not wanna do that. And then you have the third option, which is process existing clip. Now watch what happens when I use this preference. And this might be the one that you are talking about that it just reverses the same clip. So now if I go into the dialog here, I'm gonna option click, process reverse, and now watch what happens. All of my tracks that are the same exact audio file is gonna to reverse to. It's such a simple fix. If I duplicate it again, here's three tracks. I'm gonna do the same thing. Option, right click, 
and then hit reverse, all three of the sample files are being processed. That's the reason why. Go to Cubase, Settings, we're going to Open Options dialog, apply that, OK. Now when I go and I try to reverse it, let's just try it one more time for kicks and giggles, it says, hey, we have a duplicate, do you want to do it on this one or do you want to create a new version? Create a new version and now just that audio track moves. So this next question is by Raphael Cote 3577 and he's asking, I want to assign a macro to a knob on my MIDI controller. Is this something that is possible with Cubase? Thank you. So thank you for the question and let's go ahead and check out what a macro is on Cubase. So, so Cubase macros only works with hotkeys. So you have to type it on the keyboard. So let's check it out really quick. Go to edit, key commands, and then when we open key commands, we have this section here. So we're going to collapse this and we're gonna hit show macros in the bottom. So if we look at a, a macro that already exists on Cubase, it's a series of things that you want Cubase to do with one shortcut. So if I show the macro folder on the top here, which should be right over here, and then go to export audio whole song, you're gonna see that it's not yet assigned, but we can assign, let's say, we want it to be Command Shift L. So that's already assigned to something. Let's try Command Shift E. Already assigned, Command Shift P. So here we have an empty shortcut because there's nothing assigned to it. We can assign it and it's gonna do a series of steps. But if you notice here where it says type in key, we can't really type in a knob. You have to actually physically type it on the keyboard. So the answer is no, you cannot assign a macro to a knob. So the next question is from Valentina Ranucci, 2445. And she's asking, I really appreciate your help with downloading the software. So downloading the software is a little complex because Cubase has like three different installers that you need to have for some reason. It could just be two now because they took away the e-licensor, so it could be like on the cloud or on your computer rather, and you don't need to have the Steinberg key. But if you go to your Steinberg downloader, so let's go ahead and find that on my windows here. So here I have download assistant. That's the one you wanna look for. Okay, it seems that my download assistant is like crashing. I maybe need to reinstall the download or maybe there's an update for it. Yeah, it's giving me an error for some reason. I maybe need to reinstall that again, but you download the download assistant and then on the left panel, you're gonna see where it says Cubase and you can actually just download Cubase from there. It gives you a list of the versions that you wanna download. If, depending on the version that you have, you can just click on it and then hit download and everything is done inside of that download assistant. You can find the download assistant inside of the website. So if I just type here Cubase uh, download assistant or Steinberg download assistant is gonna come up here you're gonna click on Steinberg download. And then depending on if you have Windows or Mac, you can go ahead and download whichever version. And there you have it. So our final question for this video is gonna be from N33K, I believe is Neek45. And he says, I'm using Cubase 8.5 and I record rap vocals from my home studio. I record my vocals in mono. When I add an effects track for my effects, should that configuration be in mono or stereo? because I have found different answers online and want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. So the answer to that question is always use your effects track in stereo unless you want a very specific sound and you know what you're doing, then you do it in mono. Your effects track should be wide, it should be big. So let's say you're using a reverb, you don't want the reverb to just be stuck in the middle. You're also gonna be clouding a lot of frequencies if you put a reverb and it's mono. You want the room to sound like a room, not just a very narrow hallway. So you want that effect to be stereo. And in your case, especially for rap music, then you definitely want to use stereo effects not mono effects. So I hope that answered your question. So that's all of the questions that I have today. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, just drop them down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to share this with your musician friends and I will see you guys in the next video.